as you may have alluded to in my uh, Game Boy Color video, my my most recent one at the very least, um, I got a I got a few things from Extreme Rate. Um, I also got one of their Game Boy Advance shells that I want to take a look at. I did not get one of their Game Boy Advance shells with their original batch. Uh, I had only received their Game Boy Color one. Um, I think it was because at the time they had originally reached out, only the Game Boy Color one was available. They were super stoked about it. And then I made my video that was, um, well, it was especially Mako and probably a little bit more abrasive than it needed to be. But it did have some problems. Um, and that was this, by the way, that, that golden Game Boy Color. It did have some problems. And, um, quite frankly, I think I scared them away. They, they told me, yes, we've received your feedback and we'll work on it. And quite frankly, I thought that was just the end of that. But then they reached out recently and said, hey, Mako, we have these, uh, these new Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color IPS Ready shells. Want to check it out? And I'm like, hell yeah, I want to check it out. So here we are. <laughs> Neat story, right? Anyway, sorry. So, for the Game Boy Color side of things, uh, that video is probably already up at this point. I went with the uh, Chameleon. Really, really nice finish. I'm very pleased with that. But for Game Boy Advance, I wanted to go with the gold because not only did I want something that matched, but I also wanted to be able to compare the finish and see how they improved or not so much uh, as they came out with their new shells. Um, now, first thing, this thing is an absolute fingerprint magnet, but if you bought that without realizing that, um, that's on you because this is a chrome gold finish and there's just no way to do that without making it glossy. And what a glossy surface is attract? Fingerprints. Uh, now, I suppose, well, gee, Marco, why don't they just put an oleophobic coating on it? I don't know. Why, why don't they? I, I imagine it's not that cheap, and if it is cheap, I imagine it doesn't work well on the electroplated gold finish that they have on this. I, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, it's a fingerprint magnet. Expect to carry around a microfiber cloth with it everywhere you go. And I'm not saying that as a negative, because that is absolutely a positive. This thing is beautiful, and I love it. It is so bad it's good. Um, I can't compare explicitly the uh, their new shell for Game Boy Advance with their old shell, but I can compare it with, uh, for example, I have Funny Playing's IPS Ready shell, I have <laughs> Funny uh, IPS Ready shell, and um, I actually have another shell that I didn't do a video on, and I feel a little bit bad about it because I was supposed to, but I have the um, Factory B IPS Ready shell, which is very similar in appearance to Funny Playing. You have the three notches on the inside, and you can just drop in your uh, 9380 screen. Um, I still haven't actually put the thing together. It's tight, but it didn't compel me enough to make a video on, but I, I promise I'll get to it at some point. Um, actually, funny thing is, I have a build in mind for that, and that build is likely going to end up happening next few days, and that video is going to go up right away, whereas this video is probably going to, anyway, sorry, you'll figure it out. Here's what we get to get with the, our, the, the, the purchase, uh, you get the shell with a link port cover with a matching finish. You get some buttons and a little bracket for the uh, IPS screen. We'll talk about that in a minute. You get the uh, shielding. Uh, oh, it looks like they made a made a whoopsie doodle. Oh, never mind, it's right there. I made the whoopsie doodle. You get the shielding, the battery terminal, and then these two little uh, stamped sheet metal springs for the LNR buttons. Your warranty card, 
where they want you to um, post it on social media and tag them to give you a warranty, which I think is a little bit ridiculous, but I guess that's just how it works. I bet if you press them, you can get your warranty without having to do that nonsense. But I don't know. They just want to spread the love. I can't, I can't blame them too harshly for that. You also get a glass lens. Um, I don't know if this is IPS ready. I gotta take that out of there. Glass lens, label, and then some adhesive for the screen. This, that's an interesting choice. Okay, so they're gonna lose points for this, I think. They give you a regular um, OEM size. Well, no, okay, I can't actually fault them for this. They give you an OEM size lens, but your IPS kit should have come with the proper lens that you can use. So, no, that's, good job, Extreme Rate. Never mind, disregard my um, bitching. We also get these uh, membranes, the button membranes. Um, nothing too groundbreaking here. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Extreme Rate's own custom molded stuff. Uh, it's kind of interesting because on here they have, it's probably not going to come out on the video and I apologize for that, but if you can see in the gaps there is some lettering. There we go. Which is usually how I tell the OEM membranes from the aftermarket ones without having to put it together and like feel it and whatnot. Uh, but just by just by grabbing them, that's usually how I tell them apart. Um, sometimes you can just tell based off of the quality of the finish because the aftermarket ones have stuff like this. They, they'll have a little bit of flashing in there whereas the OEM ones never do. Uh, again, these ones do have flashing, but that's not a bad thing. It's just, it indicates the uh, cheaper processes used to make these, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing because as long as they work, it's fine. Um, if I had to speculate, I imagine they get maybe fewer DOAs that way, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna not talk about stuff I don't know squat about. Here is the interesting thing. For those that are unfamiliar with how AGB start and selects work, um, go watch literally any of my other videos, but you have the membrane and the button is one piece because the whole thing is this silicone material and you can't see it very well, but you, know, you can manhandle the button, do whatever you want because it's soft silicone material, whereas this, much shorter, and then in the button bag, you'll notice we have these weird looking buttons here. They give you plastic start and select. I also have a baggie of screws, baggie of tools. Now, I think it's nice that they include tools for people who don't have them. That is a nice include, but unfortunately it is extra waste for people who do have them. And because they're not Usually, they're not great tools. I think I should actually give them the benefit of the doubt and try it out this time instead of just tossing them because I got a set with my Game Boy Color shell too. But this, we won't need. These things are garbage. Anyway, screws, 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 screws. Uh, before we get started with this, let us Throw the IR or the link port cover. I'll be right back. Okay, I have retrieved the link port cover. I'm going to leave it right there. Before we get started with that, let's go over tonight's lucky donor. So, what we have here is a perfectly working Game Boy Advance that I started modding because I had parts laying around. Um, and then I. Uh, just didn't do anything with it. Um, I ended up pulling the back off of it and putting it on my uh, battery test mule. So the back of this is actually a limited edition Game Boy. Uh, so I will 
need to pop this off and take some extra special care of it. But beyond that, it is a perfectly stock. Pretty sure we're not going to find any surprises when I pop it open Game Boy Advance. More specifically what this console is, um, I used to, the prices have been absurd lately so I've stopped doing it. Hopefully my stash lets me continue this a little bit longer. I used to buy lots of consoles, broken consoles, and just fix them. This is one of those. So when I got it, it didn't work. But give it a little bit of loving, and then I fixed it, and then it worked. Nine times out of ten, it's um, severe water damage and unfixable, or the other nine times it's, uh, you know, the power switch needs cleaning. That's it. The, I'm sorry, I, I, I said that kind of funky. The one time in ten. It's the water damage thing. The other nine times it's the power switch. Anyway. I'm rambling. It's that cursed small talk nonsense. Well, I suppose I could leave the screws in. I'm not doing anything with them. I'm using the screws it comes with anyway. I'll set these aside and save them for something. And have two screws. Oh, and good, this is a 40 pin. My personal preference when it comes to IPS kits is 40 pins, just because we don't have to do a sketchy bend on the ribbon cable. That is it. Otherwise, I don't give a darn. I don't give a hoot. Alright. So now I remember why I have this unmodded. Um, it will be fine for our purposes today, but I liked having an early revision example. Excuse me, just a moment. All right, crisis averted. Okay. So yeah, it's just a um, very early model. It has the capacitor factory fix here basically it. Original release CPU. Functionally, there's nothing special about this. I just I just thought it was neat. Um, also, it does need a new speaker, but that is something I will worry about at another time. Alright. Let us continue. Let, a, let us carry on. So to start with, we need to get the screen ready. So I'm just looking at how they have the cutout here. This looks different than any of the other shells we've seen thus far. The um, factory A shells and funny playing, which I think these are just clones of the funny playing shells, to be honest. Uh, their method of securing the screen, they have these tabs in here, and most of that wall is intact, whereas this one, you have a big chunk of that wall missing. Doesn't, it does not mean anything in particular, except that it means this is an original design. Um, that's just something I haven't seen before. Not a bad thing, definitely a good thing. Uh, let me grab... <laughs> other shell here in case you decide you hate yourself and want to get the worst possible shell you can get for something like this we also have this thing which their method for securing screens is actually pretty similar okay I should have looked more closely at these uh, there are still some key differences between the two molds, which leads me to believe that these were done by separate people. Um, that will make more sense later. 
but you can also see that the uh, extreme rate shell has uh, some of the like stock style cutouts in here um, or ridges. I'm fairly certain this is for an OEM screen, not an AGS 101 screen. Let me grab this thing. Pop it out and we'll see. Yeah, so those are the same ridges if you wanted to install an OEM screen. It'll uh, seat in there nicely and self-center and all will be well. If you want to do that, I think you're looking at the wrong shell, but you do you. Uh, won't go in because it's stuck on the buttons. There we go. Oh, check those out too. Alright. Now, the reason I got this out, one of the reasons, was because you guys are probably looking at this bracket going, gee, that looks awful familiar, doesn't it? Well, I can't comment one way or the other. I don't know. But I will say, looking at the other bracket from you know who, it certainly does look pretty familiar. Now there are, again, there are enough key differences with the design of this thing that it's not like they just straight up ripped the model. This is clearly designed and built in-house. Um, but the design itself might be a little bit reminiscent of the other one because it very well might have been based off the other one. But that seats in this way, I think. Not 100% sure, but as you can see, it seats into both shells. It's nice and snug. It's nice and snug in there, but I don't know. I mean, look, I'm looking at little things like the rounded interior radius. They, they didn't have to do that. This is an injection molded part. The, uh, the, the part that I'm referring to is, uh, it's an STL. It's for 3D printing. Uh, and it's all 90 degree angles. There's no, there's no red angles on it. This thing also has some relief cuts in it just so that you're not using as much material. You know, it's lighter. They save on plastic. It's a win-win. Um, you also have this cut out here. I'm guessing that was something added by the factory for the sprue, which is sticking out quite significantly, but because it's recessed, or because it's in that recess, we don't actually have to trim it. So that's pretty clever. Uh, and then we have the model numbers on this. Uh, don't know how well you can make that out, but that is AGBV, as an advanced Game Boy version, one. K3-1. Don't know specifically what the last section means, but the first section is, this is clearly for a Game Boy Advance, and this is their first iteration of this design. Um, nonetheless, I'm going to stop talking about this because I, it's all speculation at this point. Anyway, as I was saying before I got so completely completely distracted. We need to put an IPS kit in this, and the first step to assembling a Game Boy Advance with an IPS kit is to make sure that that IPS kit works. So I am going to assemble the rear housing so that I can test this. This little spring in thing in. This goes with the uh, two prongs on the back. So they uh, fit through those loops there. Then you can bring it down, stretch it over that hook, and bob your ante. Then it drops in. 
just like that until it clicks. One thing I am slightly disappointed to see, only because I know this is a new mold, and I know fixing this means another new mold, but they should have ditched these cutouts in the battery compartment. Uh, Funny Playing did, and the other aftermarket shells did, because uh, in the age of battery mods, there is just no real reason to have these ridges. It just means one more thing to cut out. Um, it's really not too big of a deal to cut it out, except that you will ruin the finish in the battery compartment, but... Look at that, problem solved. Anyway. Anyway. I am spoiled for choice with Game Boy Advance kits, except that uh, they're all from my broken pile. So hopefully one of these two should work because the rest of these based off their labels, I don't think they're gonna work. But this one says missing colors. Let's find out if missing colors is a uh, terminal. It's probably fixable, but it's not something that I want to spend time on doing right now. Drop that in there. It is off. Now we need two baterias. And let's pop the game in. I am going to test it with this screen. This screen might be bad. It was on my desk from, I believe, the Game Boy Color video. Yeah. Sorry, screen. So if it works with this screen. Then we should be good to go. Ooh. It does, but oof. Yeah, that ain't happy. I remember this kit now. I had this set aside because it actually makes really cool effects. I mean, it's not, it's not playable, but you know, it's neat. Problem could be, I thought I saw a missing pin, but now that I'm looking at it, there does not appear to be a missing pin. I don't know, don't know. Let's try the other one. If not, I've got a kit that I know works, but that cannot stay in this console, so we can at least use it for the video. And since this motherboard can't stay in this console, or isn't going to stay in this console, it certainly can, then that's probably what we're going to end up doing. see what intermittent snow means. I know what it means, but let's see if it's uh, going to give me problems. Yeah, it's going to give me problems. Okay. Let me go grab a kit that works. I'll be back. Didn't take long. I just whipped out one of my uh, brand new kits. I was saving it for a special occasion, but I think this is that special occasion. So, not surprised that a brand new kit works because it is brand new. All right. 
Also, not gonna bother with button controls. Oh, you know what? Shoot. I can't use this kit. I gotta use the other one. I'm sorry, after all that. One more try. Good God, okay. Gotta use one of these. There's a reason for that. If this fits, the funny playing kit will fit. Also, this one has touch sensors and I wanted to test the touch sensors in the shell. Does this not have, oh there they are. Oof. I was concerned. It's okay, leave the rest of that in there. Um, I'm just gonna use this screen and not going to bother with the button controls because, like I said, I'm probably going to swap out this motherboard. So that should be it. Right. Oh. I am fairly confident that this kit works. It is a brand new kit. I know this screen works. It is a brand new... Well, I just tested the screen. And here is the tip that it comes with. The question is, which way does it go? Alright, so this has a thin side and a thick side. I'm guessing the thin side goes over here, because thin side uh, I don't know what is the top and what is the bottom, though. I am guessing, again, the thick side goes on the bottom. I don't really know why. And I don't really think it matters too greatly. So, I'm just going to send it. It's important to note that once you use this adhesive and stick the screen down, the screen lives in the console. It does not come out. It does not come out in one piece at the very least. Boom. That was not it. <laughs> uh, I did not get the tape perfectly centered. You can see through the front on the left there, the tape sticking out. I don't like that. So I'm going to fix it before moving on. should come up pretty easily. All right, that's clearly coming off. I recommend just doing this the proper way the first time. They probably have instructions. I should have checked their instructions. getting there. Ooh. I 
did just realize a slight issue with my current approach though and that I really should have left this tape on for this covering so now I cannot put the screen in there Eh, we're good. We're good. We're good. It's much better. Alright. I need a lens. I didn't think about this. I'm gonna go get a lens. Alright, so at first I found this mirror silver lens and I'm like, oh yeah, that's... It's not IPS ready, but that's gonna have to be the thing. But then I found this. I found my lens. Oh my goodness, I don't know where to put these. Okay, sorry. Let's put the lens in. I hate this plastic. This will come up easiest with a knife. Nope. Ah, oh, there we go. I got lucky. I like to save these good double sided tape. also something I should have double checked. Alright, hang on, before we stick this down, I got one more thing I gotta do. I, uh, can set that right there. I'm gonna paint the uh, inside, I'm gonna pull this off, it's like the interior bezel. If I had a paint pen, that would be the optimal tool for this job. I do not have a paint pen. I am going to use... Oh, come on. One moment. It's never on top, man. I'm going to use the Sharpie. Oh, the Sharpie doesn't do squat. It doesn't stick to the, uh, oh, because the Sharpie's almost depleted, that's why. I have another one. Okay, as it turns out, I don't actually have another black Sharpie, so that's not happening. We will just have to have gold on the inside. Ooh, that is not great. So I'm going to use this lens for now. I'm probably swapping it out at some point because that's not great. I mean, the lens itself does look phenomenal and the shell, when I polish it up like that with the lens looks great, but Two of them together ain't great because the cutout is bigger on the lens than it is on the shell. 
That is something that I could have fixed had I realized ahead of time. But unfortunately, I am dumb and did not check that. And what? Okay. This bracket is kind of weird, but okay. I'm thinking it would work best if it were stuck to the screen. Then we can drop the two in simultaneously. There we go. Pop that out. A little bit of can there. Because we're using the adhesive. Figure out a way to get this up now because the tab's gone. Never mind. That was easy. And then because the uh, bracket and the screen are basically one at this point, I'm just going to line up the bracket and use that to drop the screen in. I'm going to try. There it goes. Ooh, and someone clearly needs my attention. I got my screen very ever so slightly misaligned and this tab is bending over. I don't know how that's going to affect things. I'm worried it's going to leave a pressure spot. I mean, at this point, it's not going to turn out great anyway, but it is what it is. All right, screw it. Let us move on. Oh, no. Monster. Look at that. I am not having a good night. I mean, this one should be fine, but... Oh no, wait, this one has flux all over it. What the hell was I doing with this? All right, don't worry, I have a third. This one doesn't have any sensors on it, though. All right, well, hopefully that one works. Ugh. All right, so this bracket and this kit are a no-go. I kind of figured something like that would happen. Luckily, with the adhesive in, I said with the adhesive in, oh man, this thing's really in there. It's catching on the screen is, or is it? Oh, there it goes. I think it was catching on the screen. But I think we're gonna be okay. Goodness me. 40 minutes in and let's take Taken longer than my regular IPS and stuff. Oh, that is brilliant. Okay, so this peg lines up perfectly with the cutout in the uh, PCB and it holds it in place nicely. I mean, obviously, I throw this thing around, it ain't gonna stick in one place, but put a little bit of tape there. Now it's not going anywhere. Okay, let me get a 
touch sensor that I can install. Let me get that installed real quick and we will wrap this up. Highly recommend not soldering on top of your screen. But here we are. I think I might need to wrap this up sooner rather than later and go give someone some attention. Because apparently That is my sole focus in life now. So I will be right back. All right, we're in the home stretch. I feel it. Um, I forgot to install the shielding. Let's do that. Let me pull out the buttons and the screws. And I think we're going to be in the same situation as the Game Boy Color Shell, where we have three different screws. Indeed, that is the case. So we have these fine pitch short uh, crosshead screws. This black driver, it actually fits these screws marvelously but it is a very small driver. Yeah, I'm not digging it. Bigger drivers are just much easier to use. Buttons get the little spring and thingins. Doesn't matter which way they go in, but I tend to put the uh, protrusions on the facing out. Don't forget your LED light pipe. Here is something, I noted, noticed this earlier, but I didn't say anything, so I figured we'd get there. But, uh, oh, pop those out, pop that in, pop that in. And yeah, you can use a regular start and select if you want. No problem with that. I figured it would be designed such that you could use either. But I also figured it'd be nice to double check.
Everything seems to fit. The driver fits these screws too, which is not unexpected, but it does not make the driver feel any better. Only two screws are needed. Some Game Boys came with three. We have extra screws, so it's getting all three. I don't feel right. I think it's just that button though. Let's go ahead and plug the screen in because, you know, it's kind of half the point of this, you know. Last part, power switch. We have two choices. We have the matching gray that goes with the button set. Uh, it is the exact same color. It's been injection molded in the same color. Or we can go with the OEM style dark gray, which is not the same color as the buttons, but much closer in color to what Nintendo would have given this thing. Wow, what Nintendo usually puts into their Game Boys. Right. Drop that in there. Again, screwdriver fits, but it's small and small drivers suck. Big driver better much easier to use. Ooh, and I definitely should have tested this IPS kit since I've been through what, like six in this one video? It's the one I didn't test. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, if not, I suppose it doesn't really matter too greatly. That's not really the point of this video. But I'm still going to have to take this apart, so... Also, I skipped a step by accident. There's film on the shielding that I should have peeled off, and I didn't. That button feels funky. All right, last screw. Screw in the battery compartment. It is not a long screw. Uh, I don't know how well this shell will handle a long screw in that hole. Uh, I know other shells handle it very poorly and you'll get a bump here at the end. And it's, you, you, it doesn't look good. 
you're going to regret it, you're going to be disappointed because it's literally the last step to putting your Game Boy together and then you're going to mess it up on that. Alright. Thank God it works. <laughs> Uh, I need a flash card. Well, I don't need a flash card. Yeah, screw it. I have this card. So, yeah, the D-pad's not so great. As you can see, I can hit all four buttons at the same time. Um, I mean, you do kind of have to press on it a little hard. So I think with the ever so slight shim, it'll be fine. Uh, but the buttons do straight up look kind of different. That's interesting. Okay. Um, the buttons do have a slightly different look to them, so like they're, they're flat top instead of the slight dome that you normally get. But... Yeah, it's all right. My L and R, or my L specifically, is sticking. I think it's just the, the button, uh, the... Um, like the motherboard itself. I don't think it's the shoulder button itself. But either way, based off the D-pad, I'm not really happy with how these are performing. I would probably replace these um, with uh, some funny playing buttons. Specifically, the ones that I already have, these uh, black ones. I think that would look better with gold anyway. But, yeah, it's kind of a disappointment coming from the Game Boy Color one because the buttons on that are phenomenal, but the buttons on this one, less so. The start and select, however, feel excellent, uh, like way better than, way better than basically every other Game Boy Advance I have. I like this. I would like more people to start doing that. That's, that's nice. Um, yeah, L feels kind of funky. I'm not going to hold it against extreme rate because I think it's the Game Boy itself, even though the button is getting stuck down, kind of. But even with the button off, the, the, the tactile switch felt kind of funny. R feels perfectly fine. A and B feel perfectly fine. They are a little short such that when you press it, it gets flush with the surface. It's not bad, but it's kind of weird and I'm not used to it. Other buttons are a little bit proud when you press them, just a little bit, ever so slightly. Um, I think I prefer that. But, yeah, I mean, that's great. Oh, one more thing. Gotta stick the, uh, gotta stick the stick down. So there you have it. The, uh, Gold Extreme Rate Game Boy Advance. Unfortunately, it's not without its issues, but I suppose if you're ordering a gold shell, you probably didn't expect flawless, especially at the at the price of this thing. Um I'm still happy with it. I probably wouldn't use these going forward for my builds, but it's not 
unusable by any stretch of the imagination, and it's not... It's not bad. Um, yeah, unfortunately, they have this really cool finish, and then the shell isn't quite as good as um, the alternatives out there. But I mean, it's not bad. It's really not bad. Yeah, that would annoy the sh out of me going forward. I will have to fix that, which is a shame. Um, these buttons, L, R, A, B, start, select, D-pad, and these, um, um, I don't know what the hell they're called, these side pieces. These are all custom molded specifically by Extreme Rate for this shell. Uh, they'll work with any other shell they, they've, they've insured me. Um, actually I actually have more that I'm going to check out at some other time. But I planned on checking those out in a different shell. I'm not looking forward to it now, unfortunately, but they're still pretty neat. The uh, sticker, I went over this in the Game Boy Color video. I didn't go over this yet here, but uh, we've got the sticker on there, and it does have... They did do their own little thing with the with their logo and the PRJ Revivtro. I still don't know how to say that. But that's what this project, PRJ, is called their Revivtro line. I don't know. They're, they're making shells for Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. I am still very happy with this. This is this is nice. This is going this is going in the drawer with the other cool Game Boys. Um, just as soon as I swap out the buttons. It's going right next to this gaudy thing. And I, I mean, I guess I'm just going to keep it wrapped up in a microfiber cloth because that's what you do when you have a uh, glossy gold finish, but yeah, man, I'm sorry. I just keep looking at it and going, ah, oh, it's so bad, but it's so good. Uh... I guess let me go over some of the things I skipped when we first started out. The text on the shell, it's kind of this blurry blobby mess. Uh, unfortunately the Process 2 Electroplate it involves spraying on quite a thick amount of material which messes with the fine details on the shell. There's really not a whole lot that can be done about it aside from just ditching those details entirely. But, um, you know what, I think they still did a darn good job with, with this overall. It is, it's pretty good. Again, still, unfortunately, there are better options out there for IPS-ready shells, but none that come in this gold. Um, they also have this pretty snazzy chameleon purple-bluish finish that I, it, it's actually really grown on me. I thought it was going to be a lot cheesier than it is. Um, I'm, I'm digging it. I like it. Uh, they also have a few other finishes like this soft touch Sakura Pink or something like that. I've never been a fan of the soft touch finishes. I'm always worried that they're going to wear out prematurely. But who knows? Maybe it's fine. It's probably fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Um... If you're buying a Game Boy, if you're buying a shell like this, chances are pretty good you're not building a Game Boy that you plan on carrying around with you every single day and playing, you know, chipping away at it, wearing it down. That's probably not happening, so it's probably not a concern of yours. But, you know, as far as like a functional showpiece goes, sure, that's great. I, I just love the way it's catching my lights in the camera. I'm sorry, I, I keep getting distracted. It just, it looks so, so good. Uh, anyway, I think I need to wrap it up here because I'm rambling and because we've been going for basically an hour. Um, I will go ahead and throw some links in the description if you want to check out the, one of these for yourself. Uh, big thanks to Extreme Rate for sending this my way. Well. All three of these, really. Um, this one, 
while ago and these two within the last week. This is this has been phenomenal. Thank you for letting me check these out. Um, in case you didn't see the Game Boy Color one, phenomenal shell. Very pleased with this. My single only complaint is that it doesn't come out of the box working with the newest backlight kit. This one, on the other hand, does still have a few problems. Um, I'm going to summarize that up again real quick. Uh, the first issue, the one that I see every single time I'm looking at this thing, is that the lens area is not right. The cutout for the screen should have been bigger. Uh, if you're making an IPS ready shell, it shouldn't still need to be trimmed. I get that it's close, and depending on which lens you use it with, it's probably fine. But if you're using an IPS ready lens, you're going to see that bezel. It doesn't look great. Second, the buttons kind of suck, especially the D-pad. Um, the little nubbin in the center should be a little bit taller so that you can't press all four directions at once. That is a negative. I think the A and B buttons should be just a hair taller as well. Um, fit and finish around the L and R isn't too great. I don't like these big loose tolerances, but to be fair, that's not unexpected. I just think it can be done better. Um, my L button's not working. I think, I still, I really think it's the Game Boy board, not the button, but I'll have to play with that more later. Uh, that's kind of all I got. Um, oh, my lens isn't even here down. Well, that's fine. I was going to swap it out anyway. But, um... Yeah, no, it's good. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. Comes with a little link port cover. Matching finish. Protect your link port with style. Uh, it's kind of weird. It doesn't match, and I'm not used to it being there. I think it should be a little bit more recessed, but can't really do that because the port is flush. So if it were recessed, it would be flush with the port, and then you can't get it out. Yada, yada. Uh, it is what it is don't like it, you know, just pop it out of there, problem solved, don't use it. But, yeah, no, this is, this is phenomenal. Anyway, I'm repeating myself at this point several times over. I hope you guys have a fantastic evening, and uh, I'll catch you next time.